I'm here in Southern California and I'm taking over Vision Miner. My name's Jim and this is The Edge of Tech. Vision Miner does some incredible things, from the nanopolymer bed adhesive to sending high temp stuff into space for companies like NASA and SpaceX and even making parts for Tesla. This is Rob, he's the chief operating officer right here at Vision Miner and he's gonna take us through all of the amazing stuff that they do. Maybe even something that's not even released yet. That's something cool for you today. We're gonna see it, I think. So Rob, what do you guys do here? Like, what's your goal, your vision for Vision Miner? You know, since the beginning, it's always been about functional parts. From the drone industry, automotive parts, etc. we were tired of not having materials that were capable of being in an engine bay or mounted to an engine or, or yeah. things like that. So high temperature, chemically resistant, radiation resistance. So that led us into yeah. high temperature thermoplastics like Peak and Ultim, and that's been our bread and butter since 2017. So now we actually provide the full gamut for any business that needs to maybe take their parts and 3D scan them and turn them into a printed part, we manufacture our own machine, uh, and of that's course cool. accessories like the nanopolymer adhesive, that's been a fantastic one. <laughs> and um, so we specialize in these crazy materials for aerospace, medical, oil and gas, energy, and automotive. And we take those and we teach the clients how to use it, we support the machines, we manufacture our own machine, which makes that even easier. And yeah. then if they need to, we provide all the 3D scanners, so you have a full complete workflow for any business to take any part gotcha. and get it in a functional from, material. From start to finish. And you teach them how to get there. Correct. Right? That, Correct. That's the cool part. But you yeah. did bring up nanopolymer, and I freaking love nanopolymer. We've, like, I think it was 2019, and I met you yeah. in a Walmart. Yeah. It was like 10 o'clock at night, and uh, we, we just happened to meet each other in a Walmart going to the same event at Goshen, Indiana. Yep. And I've, I've changed my prints ever since. I, I use yeah. that on literally everything. It so. still boggles my mind that it works on everything. We made it for Peak and PPSU and Ultim. And then six months later, we didn't even know. We just tossed <laughs> it on the Ultimaker, it worked for PLA, Pet G, yeah. ABS, ASA, you name it, it pretty much works for it. It, it changed my Ender 3 forever. Like, yes. like going from yeah. without it to with it, uh, when I got home from that event was, was amazing. So when we have a part, uh, you gotta start somewhere with your clients, right? It's right. usually like a model or, or something yeah. like that. Um, what happens if you don't have a model? You mentioned scanners. So. so this is a really big thing. You know, obviously people have CAD models and designs they want to create, but what about those guys with the old injection molds for like shoes, sure. for example, boots. We did some boot molds. There's a video on that. Boots. <laughs> and you know, that was whether it was done by hand or CNC, they don't have the file, but they need it. So yeah. they can take our scanner, 3D scan it, and then they'll have a digital copy of it. Now that can be then reverse engineered into a perfect CAD program, or a lot of the time, like the part we'll check out later, you can actually often use the scanned file and it's so accurate that you can't nice. even notice a difference. That's awesome. So you have scanners here, should we check one out? Let's do it, yeah. Let's go. So we're here in the Vision Miner scanning studio and I'm with the founder and CEO of Vision Miner, Pat. How you doing, Pat? Good, buddy. Good. It was it's awesome to meet you. This is it's it's such a uh, blast to check out your place here. But I'm we're we're talking about 3D scanning now, yeah. and you have a really cool use case for 3D scanning. Yeah. Um, Rob told us about taking the the clients that you guys work with from like start to finish, yeah. right? The complete functional product. And you have like, what more functional product do you have than what's in front of you, right? This is like a perfect use case scenario and it's also fun for me. And what these are, these are parts off of a gazelle helicopter. I have a military, it's a French military gazelle helicopter. It's so high cool. performance, <laughs> ridiculous. That's awesome. And there's only 30 of them in the United States. So 30? 30. So to get replacement parts or to be able to That's find awesome. things, they got bought out by Airbus. And so when things used to cost, Thousands, now they're tens of thousands for certain parts. Sure. So this is a good example of one. We had to do a major maintenance on mine and remove the blades. Okay. And with the flapping and the movement of the blades, sure. you need to lock it in place. And so this was originally CNC'd out of aluminum and you'd buy aluminum block. This was $6,000 to get the actual part. For one? For one. And how many do you need? Three. Three, okay. And so, wow. and I got three buddies and we all have the exact same helicopter. And so I'm like, we want to own this ourselves so we can do sure. the maintenance ourselves. But going out and spending that on three sets, I was like, hey, why don't we just re reverse this real quick and I'll make it for us all. Yeah. And so that's what we did. We took the aluminum one, we scanned it, and then 3D printed out of a CF nylon just to test fit. Okay. Test fit went perfect, so then we did it out of CF Peak, and those are the ones that I made full sets of that we're able to actually put into sure. use. And so it saved us a ton of money, but it was also really good use case to use the tools that we here have at, here at Vision Miner. Sure. Um, and then Rob was like, you know, 
because I gave it to Nazar, and Nazar went to reverse it and like smooth out the edges and put it all perfect in CAD. Right. And Rob's like, why don't you just scan it and print it straight from there? Like, that's the whole point. I'm like, that's a good idea, you know? I was like, maybe we can do that. And nice. so we scan the entire thing, and you'll see like these little yeah. nubs right there. That was the pitting that was on the actual aluminum part. the actual part. part. And that's it so came cool. out perfect. So when we put the side-by-side -side of the reverse engineered part and just straight scan, saved as a watertight object, got the STL, threw it in the printer, they were almost identical. Nice. And so that was like a sales for me. I'm yeah. like, all right, now I'm really a true believer in this. Yeah. This freak is freaking awesome. So that was really cool. I, I have a question real quick. Yeah. So as far, this was the first one you did. This was, was like your test, that, that right? And then you printed them again. Yes. Um, Durability wise, from what you finished with to the aluminum part you could get, how much, is it the same, is it stronger? Like the part you actually created here, um, you know, with the 3D yeah. scan, is it as strong as that aluminum was? I'm going to guess it might be a little stronger than the aluminum. Wow. The one that we did in the Jeez. CSP, yeah. uh, Rob can dive into all yeah. the testing yeah. and stuff like that. But for my purpose, when we actually torque the blade and I started to pull on the collective, cause that's what it locks in right here. And so it'll twist it. Okay. And I'm yanking on the collective as hard as I yeah. can to see if I can snap the part or indent it. And it didn't do anything. It didn't to move it. it. So. And, and you trust it to fly in a helicopter after it's you're just done. for maintenance. I mean, it, when you're done, yeah. though, that maintenance has yeah. to be precise in a helicopter. Yeah. And you trust it for that maintenance I do. to fly when you're done. And there's another that's part. Awesome. This part yeah. here is, so we're getting ready for a movie shoot. They want to use my Gazelle helicopter for a movie. And for that, I need to put the rocket pods back on. Yes. And so this is a part that mounts this side. It's machined out of aluminum. But again, you can't find these parts, or if you can, you're looking at thirty dollars to $60,000 for the set. Okay. So I was able to get one. We're reverse engineering this now, and then we'll print this probably again out of a CF Peak. Sure. Both that, and then I'll be able to put the rockets. It won't be real, real rockets. It'll be the real pods. Come on. But it'll be, you know, wait, wait, wait. fake rockets inside. I think what we need to do is we need to go right now and fire some rockets off a helicopter because yeah. that would be a perfect. No. But so you're going to reverse engineer this yeah. here in the studio. We will. And we'll you're going to print it. You're going to bring it. And, and sometime in the future, we might be able to see your helicopter firing yeah. uh, fake rockets. For sure. Fake rockets off of the helicopter. Uh, it's, it'll be in a movie. That's Can't tell you amazing. which movie, yeah. but there's a movie that has a gazelle that's modified. And if you look at that, there's only one movie <laughs> in the world. It's I, in Rambo 3, too. The one uh, where he shoots it down with the bow and arrow. Yeah. That was a gazelle helicopter. That was a gazelle helicopter. And, and what I'm going to do while we're, while we're talking... Um, I'm going to find some clips. I think you have some really cool do, clips yeah. of your helicopter. I'm going to put them in here while we're talking so you know what the Gazelle helicopter looks like. But it's just awesome that you guys, you know, you take your parts from what you had and it's like, this doesn't make sense. We want to make a bunch of these, but at $6,000 a yeah. piece, why don't we make them ourselves? Yeah. And in the end, you have a maintenance part that cost a fraction probably yeah. of that. And not only that, but you trust it on a helicopter yeah. that you fly yourself. Yeah, for sure. And that says a lot about your company because... Yeah. Obviously, if you didn't trust your own parts that you make here. This yeah. is a critical component. Um, this could come right off. It could go into the rotor. It could sure. go into the tail blade. And so it's a true testament to my faith yeah. and belief in the products that we manufacture and sell. We'll be printing this on the 22 V3 and the CF Peak. And it's going to be as strong, if not stronger, than this part right here. So I trust it to fly with. I got faith. When you get that part done and printed, I got to see a, part, like oh, a picture sure. of this. That'd yeah. be cool. Be well, thanks. Cool. I think I think we're going to check out some scanning. Okay. Maybe we'll scan these next. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Pat. I appreciate the time. Thanks for coming down. That was down. awesome. No, this, is, this is awesome. This this place is phenomenal if you ever get the time to come down here. Enjoy your stay. Yeah. Everybody come down. Free nano. Free. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> so we just talked to Pat about 3D scanning parts for his helicopter. Rob is back with us, and we're actually going to scan the part that holds the freaking rockets to the helicopter. Uh, can you show me how this works? It's super easy, right? Absolutely, super easy, super simple. We've got it open here. Basically, just open the software. Okay. We're gonna use laser mode on this because it has some darker areas and all this reflective stuff. Oh, so When okay. it has reflections, scanners are all reflected light and it's being triangulated by lenses. So if a surface is reflective or dark, it doesn't reflect anything. It's sure. very difficult to pick up. But when you have blue lasers, the light is so intense that it'll pick it up without any issues. Let's scan it. Awesome. Let's cool. do it. So we got a little turntable here. In laser modes, you do need markers. In infrared and blue light, structured light, sometimes you don't need markers. Just go based off the geometry for tracking. But we've got a really easy thing, so we can just literally set any part right here. So I'm just yeah. gonna grab the free scan combo. We're already in laser mode yeah. and I've got my part on the turntable. So I'm just gonna hit the button here. I can look at the screen as I do it and look at that. Just 
picking up data what? like nothing else. And this isn't even the combo plus, this is the regular free scan combo. You can see how fast it's picking up all that data. Holy moly. Absolutely incredible. So I'm just gonna do a basic quick scan, get most of that geometry inside that lip there. And then you gotta scan the bottom side too, right? Sure. So really easy to do. I'm gonna delete the extra data. Oh, I didn't get the back side there. So I noticed I missed a spot. Yeah. So I'm just gonna add to the scan a little bit right on this back edge here. Oh, it's so cool. And it, it real time shows the part actually being scanned in. That right. is so cool. And with that cutting plane, it's not scanning below it. So I don't have to rescan or sure. recut re any of that. Boom, so we got that. Now we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna do a new project group within the same scan. Okay. We're just gonna flip it like that. So this is gonna auto align everything just by flipping up pretty much? Yeah, when objects are asymmetrical, mm -hmm. they usually align automatically super easy. Cool. If you're doing a symmetrical uh, scan like a bottle or something, then it can have trouble because it doesn't know sure. which way is up. Which way is up, yeah. Uh, but for this, it should be very, very simple. So got the scanner here again. I'm gonna do the same thing. And it's so fast. So fast. Oh That's, my god. The thing I love the most about the FreeScan combo, it's a little more expensive than the HX, and it does almost the same stuff, but it's got more laser modes. It just works faster. And then that infrared is incredible. You can scan a whole person in yeah. 60 seconds. Well, and you you actually sell these here at Vision Mode. Correct. Right? And, you, correct. and you show people how to use them. So we'll get a product, we'll master ourselves, and then we'll make videos. And we'll make support videos and tutorial videos and workflow nice. videos. And that allows us to know the product inside yeah. out so that when we sell it, the customers can just call us and we can Perfect. help them fix whatever they need to do yeah. or help them come up with a challenging product, a sure. project, and actually have something legit. Cool. So that's plenty of scanning data yeah. on that. Go in here, do the same thing, do a quick cutting plane. And I'm noticing while he's, uh, while he's doing this, I'm actually noticing that the scan is picking up the defects that are actually in this piece as well which is pretty crazy because you can see all of the little metal defects um, that we can actually see through here are showing up in the scan. Mm -hmm. um, now, was that something that you might go back and fix if you have to? So you could actually just go back and smooth that out on, yeah. on a part that might be broken or something, right? Right, and okay. there's smoothing in the scanning app or you can take it into something like Geomagic or Quick Surface sure. and actually get the dimensions and turn it into a perfect CAD model. Nice. Pretty simply. Very cool. Okay, so. Awesome. We've got the scan here. I'm just gonna optimize the mesh real quick. Sure. Let's do project alignment. So I'm gonna pick project one, pick project two, and so then go auto feature alignment. As you can see here, they are very much not aligned. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually gonna take them and hopefully yep. align so, them up. So we did it and automatically it didn't work. So that's easy. It's, uh, we're gonna go cancel and let's try it one more time. Let's switch the floated windows. Let's see if it does a little better. Nope, so easy enough. We're gonna go and do the markers. So I'm just gonna select three simple points. Nice. So you're, so you're able to like tell it, these down. are the points we want to align in each thing. Oh, exactly. wow. Exactly. Look how, look how cool and detailed yeah. it is. It's so detailed. And this isn't even the highest resolution. This is like, this is like, <laughs> uh, what resolution is this one on? Point, point, point five, five. So half okay. a millimeter. This goes down to point zero two millimeter Holy accuracy, moly. and you can scan at point zero one. Oh geez, that's detailed. point zero two accuracy. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Apply, boom. There we go. And we've got cool. our perfectly aligned. Scan. So now we have a part that is scanned right. in. It's aligned, and we're ready to print. And I'm assuming you don't go straight for the crazy stuff right away, but. I mean, you don't play with like PLA or ABS or PETG, even some nylons that like I would at my house. You guys play with some really cool filaments here, right? Yeah. I think we should go take a look at those filaments. I think that's Let's go great. talk filament. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we had our part, we scanned our part, and now we have to choose the proper material to use for that part. Yep. If it's going on a helicopter or something, we probably don't want to use like PLA or PETG, right? So tell us a little bit about the materials you guys use here at Vision Miner 
and why those materials are better for helicopter or even space, like, you know, first NASA or something like that. Right. You know, when you're making an aircraft part or a space part, there's a lot of certifications. And there's some baseline certifications like the FST rating. That's flame smoke toxicity. Okay. So for aerospace, you're looking at UL94 V0, which means it's self-extinguishing. It won't drip burning plastic. It won't drip <laughs> molten plastic. And so that's like the baseline for aerospace. Okay. So a lot of our materials, I mean, we do everything from CF9 line to yeah. polycarbonate to PES to Ultims and everything like that. And so picking the right one, really you're looking at the strength of the part, okay. that, but that could be rigidity. It might also be impact strength. Can it take a beating? You sure. Know, a really rigid part might be uh, very, very rigid, but very brittle at the same time oh. versus something like a nylon where it gotcha. will take an impact and bend instead of shattering. Instead of shattering. Uh, next, you have chemical resistance. You know, uh, we've had requests like this needs to survive in uh, 200 Celsius uh, liquid <laughs> uh, sulfuric acid for 20,000 hours. And we're like, Okay, so that's a chemical <laughs> resistance issue. So uh, definitely not PLA. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I mean, PLA is great for some stuff because yeah, yeah. of its rigidity. Right. It'll just melt in your car. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then you have, you have radiation <laughs> resistance, yeah. and you have, uh, you know, different types of uh, dielectric resistance. So you have ESD safe materials where if you're True. working with electronics, it'll take the static shock instead of your electronics taking oh, a shot. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's so cool. very, very specialty applications. And a lot of the time, people will you know, send us their part and say, we want this in peak. And we're like, why? And they're like, well, it's the best, right? And we're like, well, <laughs> you know, it's also the most difficult, most expensive, and uh, you know, overall, right. yeah, you know. But what are you doing? So you yeah. have to know what's the requirements of the part you know, is it rigidity, is it strength, is it chemical, is it heat resistance for in an yeah. engine bay? So you start there, what's the part actually gonna see? And then based on that, you look at the technical data sheets and everything, and you determine a couple viable materials, mm -hmm. and then you look at the actual printing of those materials. Sure. If, if peak is incredibly difficult and warpy and it's a large part, it might not be possible in certain machines. Uh, if it's I didn't in, think about that. Yeah. You know, if it's a smaller part and everything, then you'll be just fine and you'll sure. get you know, incredible ROI compared to any other manufacturing method. Well, and, and that's why you're here. Like we talked about before, like taking the, the, the client right from start to finish right. and then showing them, this is really educating them on what they should be using. Yeah. Because like a lot of us are gonna be like, we're gonna use the best. I heard yeah. nylon's gonna be the best thing ever and we're gonna print right. in nylon. But then you guys can be like, hang on here. Yeah. <laughs> let's, we, let's talk about why you're using this. Yeah. Just because you think it's the best, doesn't mean it's the best for you. So we have our part, right? We're gonna make that rocket pod part. Yep. Um, out of this vast wall of filament yep. of all the high temp stuff you use, what would you choose in, in that particular you know, choice. So I usually start at the less expensive and and capable, but but what's the the minimum viable product? Sure. So most of the time for aerospace, I'll default to Ultim 9085. It's heavily used, you know, on aircraft throughout the world okay. for many years now. So that's a good baseline. And then depending on the rigidity, maybe we want some uh, CF in there just to make it more rigid, or maybe we'll go all the way up to peak just so we know it's going to be extremely strong, resistant to all the UV nice. outside, any heat, any anything anything <laughs> even yeah. rocket pods literally anything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking behind me i'm like looking because i'm like oh where's this on the shelf while he was yeah. talking yeah. but that's it's so cool that you guys have the knowledge to be like okay this is what we're probably going to use it's it's for this application um let's let's try some stuff off the wall and see what it is right you know one of the biggest things we've always done in the beginning when we started there's like one company printing peak and we're like okay peak ultimate ppsc all these materials heavily used nobody's printing them so just like in the consumer market, 3D printing is still kind of new. Sure. It's still new in the functional part aspect of the industrial market. They've gotcha. been around for 30, 40 years doing prototypes, but now that there's functional materials available, right. so much of it is educating and helping our clients understand what's available in the first place because they've been using Ultimate 985 for 10 years. <laughs> they're like, well, you could consider this other material and it'll sure. save you time and it'll be better in an XYZ way. And so a huge part of what we do is educating and consulting with our clients to get the best possible option out awesome. of all of these different materials and everything. So we have the, the filaments we're gonna use. That brings us to the next cool step, the printers. Yes. And you guys have some awesome printers here. Let's go check out some printers. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, with that filament picked out, we're over here in the printers area of Vision Miner, and we're clearly not gonna use this uh, older Ender 3 to print that model from. For one, it's not gonna fit on this bed. For two, that high temp filament will definitely not print through this stock Ender 3. 
If you're watching this, don't tell me it's gonna, because this is never gonna print that filament. But what will print that filament is these machines behind me. And this is a brand new machine that's not even released yet. So now it is. Surprise! So Rob, I pulled the, the cover off of this new printer. What are we looking at here? So this is the new latest version of the 22 IDEX, the V3. And we've really gone above and beyond to automate processes, make everything more user friendly and many, many other little just quality of life improvements. Dude, this thing is sick. I, I just sitting here, this thing does high temp filaments. It does a lot of cool stuff. And Rob, they're gonna let me shoot a first look video on their brand new printer, so stay tuned. Uh, if, if it's already out there, you gotta watch that one and I'll put it right here or wherever that goes on the YouTubes. But this thing like lifts up, right? Yep. And this is an IDEX, so it has, yep. it can do two things at once. It can do multi-material. Um, and you work with some other companies that we all know, like what, Slice Engineering and Bontech. Yep. Um, and, and like I said, we're gonna go more in depth, but this is the machine that you would print that part for Pat on. Correct. correct. Awesome. This machine is basically the culmination of seven years of working with high temp printers, many other brands, many other printers. And, you know, over the years, we were always giving them suggestions and improvements. Hey, change this, make this better, make that easier. And we were now we're just cutting past that whole thing and we're making <laughs> it the way we want it. So we awesome. use these machines every day for our print service and for everything else. And that allows us to have rapid iteration, rapid improvement, see what's actually going on with the printer, making profiles, doing custom nice. stuff for customers, you name it. And, and this is the, the V3. So this is the third Correct. version that you guys had. Right. And, and this thing is just, it's super cool to see. Like I said, check out the full in-depth uh, first look video because you're going to see a ton more about this printer. But um, I, I'm super pumped to actually see this thing work. So yeah. that, that's going to be a lot of fun. Dude. So we have a part that we've, we've scanned. We have filament that we've picked out. We have the printer we're going to print it on, right? And the next step would just be to print it. We can't do that in the time that we have today, but I will promise that we will show that part uh, in the future once you guys print that part on one of these machines. Most definitely. Um, is there anything else cool we could talk about or, or should we save it for the other video? I mean, the basic specs, you're looking at a 500 Celsius nozzle. That'll process any thermoplastic on the market. 500 Celsius? 500C. 200 C so on bed. So the bed oh gets hot God. enough. It'll actually go higher than that. Yeah. But 200 C, that'll keep anything stuck to the bed that you want. And that <laughs> that alone heats the chamber, but it's also an actively heated chamber okay. that we advertise at 90 C. Yeah. Again, that does go higher. Uh, fully insulated. And the biggest difference on this new version is, again, the XY tool head offset, the Z offset, the tool head Z offset, sure. and everything is completely automated. You take it out nice. of the box. You plug it in, you connect to it, hit calibrate, and then it's and ready it. for you to put in your bill plate and start printing. Literally, you just hit yeah. calibrate and that's it. That's it. What's super cool is to see this thing in person at uh, Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival. You had the V2 there yep. and it was doing the dance. You know, I put a Benchy on it at one point and the Benchy was like being crazy in there. I think I have footage. If not, we'll find some. Uh, but I've been watching the video since we met. Like 2019, you've had these really cool... Uh, printers in here that you've been showing like super high temp stuff with and now it's in front of me and that just it, it drives me like absolutely crazy it is such a cool thing to see but um you have to stick this stuff down to the bed somehow. Mm -hmm. And you guys developed a nanopolymer for this exact thing, right? So it was probably to stick it down to other people's machines or maybe early versions of other machines you guys had. But now that you have your own machines, mm -hmm. you guys use nanopolymer here on these machines, right? Every single day. As you can see here, we've got a bottle and it's uh, pretty well used. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, this we use it every day. We found the best way to develop a product that's gonna be good for the market is to use the products we sell and then solve problems for them. And if we're having a problem with our printer or any other printer and we can s create something to solve that, it just makes sense and it's good for everybody. So that's yeah. what we did here and we made it for Peak and Ultim and then later discovered it worked on PLA, PETV, ABS, ASA, uh, CF Nylon, Polycarbonate, you name it. That's awesome. It still works for it. It's it absolutely I, nice. I can attest, like I said earlier, uh, like when we were talking, I have used it since we met. He gave me this like, probably two or three of these samples, don't tell Pat. But um, he gave me a couple of these samples when we first met. And ever since then, I have been uh, using this stuff on pretty much every printer. I use it all the time on my bamboos. It just works great on all the plates I use too. And it pretty much just releases. That's my favorite thing. It holds, if you have a heated bed, 
This stuff holds, and then as soon as it's done, the part just pops off. Usually, I don't even have to pop the part off. I just touch it, and it like slides yeah, right it's off. Crazy. So, like on glass beds, yeah. I remember when we first started testing on our Ultimaker. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I was sitting in the office, and I heard a ping in the back. I was like, what was that? What was that? And I yeah. go over to the printer, and the part's just loose. It's just there already. Uh, there's a big Twitter uh, or X thread uh, yeah. where yeah, people yeah. were talking about how they almost had a heart attack because they thought it was the bill plate, but it was just the part releasing. Yeah. And it just makes it so easy. It does. Yeah. And you guys manufacture that here in-house. 100%. Made in That's USA, awesome. all by Americans. Yeah. yeah. So, so that you guys use in here to hold your parts in, in your high temp, uh, right. what we say, 500 nozzle and 100 in the build chamber. And that stuff holds up and yep. just releases when it's done. Pretty much. Yeah. Now, high temps, it can change up a little bit. Okay. So, uh, you know, you, there's different methodologies and whatnot, but there's so much pulling forces. Another thing that we did that uh, was a problem that we solved was, you know, maybe you've experienced this on PET G or ABS. Even with a glue stick, it'll break glass. Right, it'll pull it, chunks it pulls it off. Right? It, I think there's a famous video where Joel had that huge printer in his garage and it mm -hmm. ripped the, the center of the yeah. building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. He should have used Nano. Right. So, well, Joel, where are you at on that one? Come on, Joel. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> so, I mean, that, that can still be a thing, especially really on really thick ABS parts, you know, because the part shrinks so much. Mm -hmm. It's just the nature of the thing. So, we developed our carbon fiber built plates, and that is something that changed our lives oh, here. Wow. They don't ship and break. You know, this does work on PEI, Garolite, FR4 board, uh, glass, you name it. Yeah. It pretty much works on it. Uh, but that's just another way that we save time, save money. We're not breaking bill plates all the time, and we're using nano. That's actually awesome. We need to. Yeah. Sweet. Well, we have uh, a model. We have the everything. We got it printed. We got the nano polymer to hold it to the thing. The next thing is to print it. Again, we don't have time to do that today, but. Uh, That'll be a follow-up video. Yeah, we'll yeah we'll follow-up video. Yeah. They'll definitely send me pictures. I can't yeah. wait to see the parts. And then functionally, I can't wait to see yeah. rocket pods on the side of a helicopter from what we scanned in there. It's yes. gonna be it's gonna be super cool. All right, so we started today. We talked about a project that we're gonna walk through, something you guys would do with your clients. We ended up with your brand new machine, the 22 IDEX V3. That's right here. I think it's time uh, to wrap it up. Man, I really appreciate you letting me come in and check out the studio and check out your shop here. And uh, we are gonna go uh, actually film a first look on the 22 IDEX V3, which is this machine right here. Rob, thank you so much, man. Dude, I really appreciate it. Thanks thank for coming you. out, Jim. This is so much fun. And we're in California, man. So yeah. I can't wait to come back. I can't wait to get into one of these because you have so much knowledge and there's so much to learn. Uh, but if you're out there and you're watching, uh, check out Vision Miner. They have an awesome YouTube channel. They teach you tons of stuff about high temp, uh, SLS, pretty much nanopolymer, pretty much everything. I mean, scanning, you guys. printing. Yeah, scanning, printing. Everything we did. I mean, yeah. pretty much what we did today. Yeah. And this thing is going to be coming soon. Uh, also, uh, don't forget to jump on and grab a sample of nanopolymer. They'll. You could buy one, right, for a sample yeah, from you guys? Yeah, online for five bucks. Or five we, bucks. We have a money back guarantee. If it doesn't work, if you don't like it, if you're not happy with it, give us a call, shoot us an email, we'll replace it or uh, give you a refund. But yeah. it works that well. We back it with full confidence. It yeah. works incredibly well, and we're, yeah. we guarantee that you'll love it. So jump on visionminer.com, grab yourself a $5 sample of the nanopolymer. But let me know in this video right here what you guys think, because I know I love it, but you never know, right? Full money back guarantee, you said? 100%. Wow, that's awesome. Guaranteed. Again, Rob, thank you so much, man. You got it, man. Let's go film this. I want to jump on this let's one, so it. let's go film let's that one. It. Let's get into it. All right. <laughs> See you later. Huh.